So today I'm going to attempt to make $5 casseroles. So I just dropped Sarah off at preschool. I'm headed into Walmart because that's the place where I can get the cheapest groceries here where I live. So going into Walmart, we're gonna see if we can make casseroles for just $5. Let's go. <laughs> made it back from the store and I'll be honest, I get lots of stares <laughs> when I bring my camera in and I'm filming the ingredients, but I wanted to show you that you really can make cheap recipes. The total came to $16.63, so I was close to my $5 a recipe. It came to like a little over $5.50 a recipe, but do you know what? Still calling it a win. Now for the fun part, let's make the recipes. So the first recipe I'm making is our cinnamon roll French bread bake. All right, the first thing that I grabbed at the store was my $1 French bread. Next up, I grabbed some eggs. Now I need eggs for a different recipe, so I actually found 18 eggs for a dollar. So we're only gonna charge ourselves 50 cents because, you know, we're gonna use it for both recipes. Next, I grabbed some milk. It calls for whole milk, but you can actually use skim milk too. I have 1%, it's the same. Now I need this for two recipes, so I'm gonna only charge myself for half. Now I might have cheated because I already had brown sugar, so I'm not charging myself for brown sugar. If you need some, it might cost you an extra dollar or so. And the last thing I purchased is cream cheese frosting. All right, we're gonna start by preheating our oven to 350 degrees. All right, now you're gonna cut the French bread into half inch slices. Mine are closer to an inch and you know, it'll still work, it's fine. <laughs> now I'm gonna take a pan and spray it with non-stick cooking spray. I like to use Pam. Then you're gonna take your bread and just do a single layer on the bottom. Now, mine are a little thick because, uh, let's be honest, my knife is really bad. If you have good knives, I would love some a suggestion because, by golly, it's time. It's time to get some good knives here. All right, in a little bowl, we're gonna crack five eggs. We're gonna add three-fourths cup of milk. Now, please don't be mad. There are some things I didn't add to the $5. So I already had vanilla, I already had cinnamon, and I already had nutmeg. So hopefully you have these in your house. So we have two teaspoons of vanilla, half tablespoon of cinnamon. Whoa, I won't add as much since I got a little out of control. <laughs> and then two teaspoons of nutmeg. And we're just gonna mix this up really well, break those egg yolks. Then we're gonna pour half of the mixture onto our little French bread, French toast. That might be more than half, but that's okay. I'm gonna spread it around just a little bit. Okay, and we're just gonna add the rest of our bread on there, just going right over top. Actually, you can go a different way if you want to, but mm, I'm lazy. We're just gonna go the same way. I'm gonna cut off the butt ed edge of this. I don't want the butt on there. I know these pieces are a little smaller, but it will still work. Okay, then we're gonna take the rest of our mixture and just pour it on top. I'm gonna try and cover as much as of the bread as possible. Now for my favorite part, you're gonna take about half a cup of brown sugar and we're just gonna sprinkle it on top. Okay, we're gonna use my fingers to sprinkle because it just makes <laughs> my life a little easier. Here we go. Then if you want to, you can add a little bit of cinnamon too. I'm gonna add cinnamon because I love cinnamon toast. Now with this recipe, you don't have to let it sit overnight. You can just bake it as soon as you're done. Or if you want to have it overnight, that will work too. So either way, it doesn't matter. But we're gonna bake it at 350 degrees for about 25 minutes. All right, our French toast bake is all done cooking. Now I'm gonna take the cream cheese frosting. Yes, I know, it's canned. I actually don't mind it. But I'm gonna stick it in the microwave for about 10 seconds or so just to get it nice and soft so we can spread it on top of our French toast. Mm. Now the secret is pull this out of the oven, let it sit for about a minute or two. I've kind of softened up our frosting and we're just gonna put a blob of frosting on each French toast bite. This is like the good stuff. Calories don't count during holidays, right? Right. <laughs> then I'm gently, gently, you don't want any of that brown sugar to come up, just gonna spread it across 
each one. It comes up a little, and that's okay. Just try your hardest. <laughs> oh my goodness, my husband is gonna be so excited for breakfast tomorrow. And my husband is a little shy. He does not love to be on the camera, so maybe one day you'll see him, but for the most part, like some of my kids are also pretty shy, so. You get to see Sarah. She's not my shy kid. Or Ansley. She's not shy either. <laughs> okay. And we're just gonna let this sit and melt. All right, Ensley's gonna try the the baked French toast. That's again? really good. Yeah. Five out of five. Five out of five. Nice. So the next recipe I'm making is our ham and broccoli breakfast casserole. Now this one's a little healthier than the last one, but it's still one of my favorites. So the first ingredient you're grabbing is whole wheat English muffins. If you don't love whole wheat, you can just buy normal English muffins too. Next is two cups of broccoli. Now the fresh broccoli was actually too expensive and so I went and checked on the freezer aisle and you can get two cups for just a dollar. So we're gonna do this and then steam it. Next up is our cheese. Now it's a lot cheaper to buy a block of cheese than it is the shredded, so we're gonna save money and buy a block. Now from the previous recipe, we needed five eggs. This one we need 12, so we're using the rest of the 18 eggs. So we're gonna just count this as like 50 cents. Also for this recipe, we're gonna use more of the milk. Now if you watched my last video, you saw that I made ham in the slow cooker. Now usually we have a lot of ham left over, so I love to put it in bags or tin foil and freeze it in the freezer. I'm gonna use leftover ham. I apologize if you don't have ham. It might cost you an extra dollar or two. You can buy some just diced ham or whatever ham you wanna use, but if you have leftover ham, this is the perfect recipe for it. All right, let's make the casserole. First we're gonna cut up four English muffins into bite-sized pieces. These are all cut up. Now I'm gonna steam the broccoli so it's not nearly so frozen. Now while the broccoli cooks, I'm gonna cut up my ham into bite-sized pieces. You want about two cups of ham. Okay, in a nine by 13 pan, we're gonna spray it with some cooking spray. And we're gonna add our broccoli, so about two cups of broccoli. And I didn't cook this all the way through, but just enough so it wasn't frozen, so. Okay, next we're gonna add, woo, our bite-sized English muffins, and then I also cut up the ham on here too, because they're all gonna mix together. There we go. And then I shredded up some of the cheese, so we have three-fourths cup of cheddar cheese. All right, now we're just gonna gently kind of mix this all together. You just want broccoli and ham. <laughs> Ooh, there you go, puppy. And English muffins, just kind of all, all spread out a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and set this aside and then get our eggs and milk ready. All right, into the bowl, we're gonna crack just 12 eggs. Now this is a little thing called a crack -um. It's not sponsored or anything. I just love it because it's like one hit. It cracks it perfectly. <laughs> I just love it. It's just one of the things I love having in my kitchen now. Now there's one extra egg. I am actually just gonna add it anyways because I hate just having one egg in a carton. <laughs> To the eggs, we're gonna add one cup of milk, about one teaspoon of paprika. This is almost gone, so I'm just gonna use the rest of it here. And then instead of four teaspoon of crushed red pepper, so I'm just gonna grab like a pinch of it and just kind of put it on in. And we're just gonna whisk this all together. Make sure you break all those egg yolks. That's my biggest struggle. And I forgot one important thing, salt and pepper to taste. <laughs> You'll want some of that. All right, mix that in here too. All right, I think we're ready. Okay, now we're just going to very carefully and gently pour this on. Now this recipe says it, it needs to sit overnight. I'll be honest, I never do overnight. I don't have the patience for it. So I'm gonna let it sit in the fridge for about 20 minutes, let it soak in all of that bread, and then we're gonna go from there. But if you're gonna make it in the evening and then cook it in the morning, Perfect, perfect for overnight. So, you can make sure everything is kind of covered here. We're gonna cover it with foil and then stick it in the fridge. All right, whether it's been in your fridge for just a little bit or overnight, we're gonna take this and add the rest of our cheese. So it's about an extra cup or so. Rest of our cheese, we're gonna cook it 375 for 45 minutes and we're actually gonna cover it while it cooks. Okay, there we go. 
All right, it is done. Browned on top. It is looking so good. All right, Sarah's so gonna try the casserole for us. Broccoli and ham and eggs. Thumb up, thumb down. That means it's okay. Not your no. kind of. But not my thing. Okay, what you gonna rank it? Maybe a four. A four? Still pretty good? Mm -hmm. Actually, a four. A three? Because it's not black. <laughs> And the last recipe is our twice baked potato casserole. Woo, say that 10 times fast. The things I needed at the store is a five pound bag of Idaho potatoes. Next, this recipe calls for 10 strips of bacon, but 10 strips of bacon is kind of expensive. So we went with the bacon bits, a lot cheaper, still the same bacon flavor. Next is one eight ounce package of cream cheese. And then you need some cheddar cheese in there. So we just grabbed a block of cheddar cheese instead of the shredded, just because it's a lot cheaper. Now this recipe also calls for sour cream and butter, but I already had those two things, so I apologize if you don't. That might bump up your price a little bit past the $5. Now this recipe is in the description, but they bake their potatoes in the oven. Now, if you've known me, if you've been here a while, you know, that I love the Instant Pot. So we're gonna cook all the potatoes in the Instant Pot and make our lives a lot easier. Now, I'm gonna try and cook all five pounds of potatoes at the same time, so I'm pulling out the giant eight quart so we can cook them all. Now you wanna make sure that you wash your potatoes really good, especially if you're leaving the skins on. And I'm gonna leave the skins on because I love potato skins. Our potatoes actually didn't go all the way to the top, so if you have a six quart, it might just work. Just, yeah. Fill it up as much as you can. Okay, potatoes are washed. We're gonna add about a cup of water in here and then just put it right into our Instant Pot. All right, go ahead and put your lid on. There we go. If you have a little knob that says sealing and venting, make sure it's on sealing. Okay, we're gonna go to pressure cook and we're gonna take our time all the way down to 20 minutes. Now with this machine, because it's my eight quart, I do have to push start, but sometimes you can just walk away once you set the time. All right. We'll let this cook. All right, the potatoes have been done cooking for about six minutes. We're gonna release the pressure and let them out. All right, all the pressure's out. Potatoes are done. This is my favorite little thing, silicone steamer. Oh, it's a, it's a heavy pot. We're gonna hook it on. There we go. And then we'll just drain out the water. All right, drained all the liquid. Pull this little dude off. Oh, come on, little man. Now I love this recipe because we're gonna work just straight from the pot. Now my beaters broke last time I used them so I don't have beaters right now. So we're gonna do the potato masher and just mash the heck out of all these potatoes. While we're mashing, we're gonna add a half a cup of butter or one, one stick as my mom used to call it. <laughs> and then we're gonna also add the eight ounces of cream cheese. And then the last thing, if you have sour cream, which I'm sorry, <laughs> Yes, I already had some, so I didn't need to buy any, but just, it's about one cup of sour cream. I only have about a half a cup, but it'll still work. All right, then we're gonna keep on mixing this. Now, if you had beaters, you would mix this until it is nice and smooth, but with my potato masher, this is about as creamy and as smooth as I'm gonna get it today. All right, we are not done yet, so we're gonna add Salt and pepper to taste. And there's a lot of potatoes here, so be a little generous with your salt and pepper, okay? I mean, I love salt, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then we're gonna add half the package of bacon. Just be careful, sometimes that little blue thing comes in it. And then about a cup and a half of your shredded cheese. Okay, I'm gonna carefully mix this all together. It's looking good, this is like, loaded mashed potato bake, that's what it should be called. I know it's twice baked potatoes, but it really is just like a giant mashed potatoes, yeah. <laughs> Our last casserole, here we go. This thing is heavy. <laughs> okay, we're gonna dump this all into our nine by 13 pan. Okay, now we're just gonna spread this out. Ooh, at least the best that we can. That is a lot of potatoes. If you guys have a lot of people coming over, this is actually a very easy 
Easy dish to make. Okay, now you're gonna take the rest of your cheese. I don't have a ton left, about half a cup or so. One thing I would change is probably buy a little bit more cheese because this is a lot of potatoes. Then I'm just gonna take the rest of the bacon bits. And we're gonna go on top here too. So we're gonna cook this 350 degrees for about 30 minutes or so, but my potatoes are already hot, so mostly just until the cheese is melted, we should be good. All right, these are all done cooking. My kids are gonna be in heaven. All right, we have a taste tester, Sarah, mm -hmm. for the mashed potatoes. Yes. Ready? Good? Nice. I'll give it a five. Good job. Now if you want more simple, easy recipes, I have some three ingredient recipes right up there. All right guys, I'll see you next time.